Well, hello, hello, hello. This will be another audio video. <laughs> oh, Lord. God is good. Peace be with you and with your family. I pray for no stress in your life. I pray for people that are under the threat of people that I have attempted suicide. I heard about a young lady that's trying to kill herself because of her bills. Lord, please. Lord, don't let her attempt it again. They had to revive her. She had overdosed on some pills. And uh, they thank God they saved that she's in recovery right now. Let's pray for her. Young people wanting to die. Black people didn't used to kill themselves, they say, a long time ago. But it doesn't matter your race or color. Don't kill yourself. I've talked about that in earlier videos and on Facebook. Please don't take your life. I, I uh, learned of a young man that I knew when he was a little boy. He ended up killing himself. He was tired and discouraged and depressed and didn't want to live anymore. And he ended up taking his life. Please don't kill yourself. It's, sometimes it's not always the 24 hours the next day that will bring about results of positiveness. Sometimes it's the next minute, second. Sometimes more times than not, opening your mouth and just telling people what you're going through. Tell people what's going on with you. You know, if that one person laughs and say, oh, you do, you, you don't need to kill yourself, whatever, you crazy, you talking crazy, go on, get away from me. Yeah, go to somebody else and keep talking until somebody hear you. Just keep on, just keep living, but keep talking and telling somebody, hey, I feel like I don't want to live anymore. And I pray to God you run into somebody like me that has been there and attempted, they're taking their own life before. Because I tried to kill myself a couple of times before. So I know where you're at and what you're going through. And by God's grace and mercy, when I was running around getting drank and drinking and getting high, which was really a result of <laughs> wanting to kill myself, because alcohol sometimes are depressing, you know. I know what you're going through. I know what it feels like. So I wish you would run into somebody like me that has been there before, that knows that that's not the way out and that that's not the way to go about of achieving uh, uh, happiness, <laughs> contentment, uh, the way to get back at the people that's trying to collect money from you. So I pray for all these people. I, I pray for those people that think about suicide. Don't do it. I pray, God, that you send a comforter to them. I send somebody in their lives, Lord, that keeps them from killing themselves. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the people depressed. I pray for the elderly people out here that's being a uh, taken advantage of, people doing scams on them. I pray that you watch over and send them protected to them, Lord. In the name of Jesus of Christ, I pray. Amen. Oh, Lord. Well, it's been a minute since I've been out here, and uh, like I said, I try to come back with something positive, and uh, I'm just a, a diary of my life. That's really what I want to I call these videos, a diary of my life. And uh, so you know the things I want to achieve. I want to achieve a church. I want to achieve helping people. So with that being said, I know I'm talking fast because anyway, uh, you'll see why. Uh, that's the phone. Uh, let me tell you where I'm at. <laughs> um, didn't get to go to church. So if I lose track of where I'm at, then hey, uh, try to keep up. <laughs> I pray. Um, let me see. Where should I begin? Uh, the guy at work is still getting, he, he's not bothering me as much, but I found out that he's picking out other people. And uh, that's not right, so I need to address that issue. I'm going to write to some people and, and let them be aware of it. You know, and like I said, it's not just color. I thought it was about color too, but it's not color. I think some of it is ageism, age discrimination. Because this one white guy, he has a, a neurological issues, and they haven't addressed some paperwork that he turned in. So that's wrong. And the man is getting depressed and frustrated. And so I don't like that, you know. So uh, anyway, that's going on on the job. Other than that, let me tell you what happened. Anyway, I'm coming home from work. Uh, what was it? My days get mixed up doing this third shift thing. I'm going to get into that too. But anyway, I'm coming home. So sh short story. The car broke down. The car broke down at All American Car uh, Wash. And so I'm running back and forth trying to figure out what to do. So one of the employees from the job, she happened to, I waved her down. So she tried to give me a jump and that didn't work. So I'm trying to get the car to start. I'm way away from home. Eventually, I went back. I was going to catch the bus, but I didn't see the bus and didn't nobody know what time it comes. I'm not familiar with their bus area. So, I go back to the car to try to attempt to start it again. So, here comes the man that owns the car wash. Oh, you got to get that car off of my lot. 
I'm looking at him. I mean, you see me in distress. Evidently, you've been set now. You see my whole situation. But you're going to come to me real negative and nasty like that. So, that show you how people are. So, anyway, uh, shows you that now nah, that's not the place for me to live. So, anyway, I'm telling him I'm calling the place. I'm going to get it out. Well, in the meantime, uh, people can my customers can't get through. All this time, I've been sitting there eight or nine. I get, I've been working 12 hours, standing on my feet. My feet hurt. My back hurt. My cars broke down. I haven't been to sleep. I got off work at 7 o'clock. It's going on 9. But you want to come to me and address me like that. So then you said I'm blocking your customers, which I hadn't seen any, except a homeless man walking back and forth. So then he gets his daughter, and they help push me to the side. I said, well, I'm on the sidewalk. He said, no, nah, uh, you're not on the sidewalk. I just had to lie. So then you're going to try to act like you're going to be nice. So I'm looking at the police riding all around, which is good. They got police in the area. So I'm thinking, like, I might get a ticket. Oh, you won't get a ticket. I know right here. So I'm calling the people, telling them to come and tow my car. Thank God they come and tow my car, and they take it back to, supposedly take it back to my house. Well, they got it back to my house. No incident. I didn't have to pay extra money. So that's God blessing me. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for the man that was being nasty because you need to address people better than that and see that when people broke down, they broke down. But like I said, the devil shows up and shows out of other people. And it did. It hurt me when he said it. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't retaliate with no cuss words, but I, it just shows you how nasty people are. And it doesn't matter about race, but he was nasty. So anyway, uh, finally, I started walking to the bus and I meet a lady. She's sitting on the bus stop which is near the highway, so eventually the bus came. So I get off the bus, I start walking through 4th Street. As I'm walking through 4th Street, oh my God, who did I run into? The lady that I had started the church with. Annette, who I had been praying about and everything, was hoping we ran into each other, but didn't know under these circumstances. Because she used to drive, but so happened she's not driving. So I guess maybe I got some of it, the car broke down so I couldn't meet her. So that was a blessing. So we walking through, we talking, catching up on where we are. She told me about a man that died. He used to tutor me in math and go, oh, God, he's dead, young man. So I was like, oh, my God, I'm sorry to hear that. So we caught up on a lot of stuff. I'm telling her about what's going on. She's telling me about what's going on, her situation. And her car broke down, too. And so and she had another car. She was in a car accident, and now she's walking. So uh, we walked and talked, and then I was waiting for the bus. Now, man, you no sleep. Carbon broke down walking, catching the toy. So anyway, finally, I'm trying to, uh, a man asked for a transfer, so I gave him my transfer. So then turn around, here it is. I'm trying to dig in my purse because the bus is coming. So Annette gave me $2, God bless her heart. I had the money, but she gave me $2 to get on the bus. So I went out and got on the bus and everything. So then I had to wait another two hours for the bus to come to get me home. So finally, I'm on the bus. I fell asleep talking to this man. So finally, the bus driver, God, be, I don't know how he knew, she knew, but she was like, isn't this your bus? I thank God, and that woke me up, so I got out, then I had to walk home, and which my car was here when I got here. So anyway, that's the story. What's funny is the car broke down, uh, uh, you know, uh, let me stay on track right here for a minute. Okay, all of this happened, the car broke down, uh, they sent me paperwork saying that, uh, Somebody's trying to sue me. Capital One's trying to sue me or something. Talking about court. You know, the little issue stuff they do. So that's something I got to deal with. All of this is happening. You know, it's like when things bad happen, they just come at you. Just keep on hitting you. You know, but I'm not worrying about it. So anyway, it's funny all of this happened. You know, and it's funny, funny uh, that it happened. That, thank you, Jesus. God keep playing James in my Consider it pure joy when trials and tribulation come against you. You know what I'm saying? It's just God testing you. It's perseverance. So anyway, here it is. I had already uh, started a program to help the elderly learn about uh, bank accounts and overdraft and fees and all this type of thing. Okay, the man didn't even call me to let me know that I was uh, eligible for it and that I had received it. So I missed out last Tuesday. So it's going to be on Tuesday at 12 o'clock at the Public Library at 39th and Broadway. So like I said, the car broke down. Thank God that I was putting things in, in place, and it was, uh, I want to start a double Dutch team, so I was getting ready to get volunteers and things for that. But without my car, it's difficult. It's, it's, I need my car to do the things I want to do, and it's funny, the devil broke the car down. You know, then the mechanic going to keep calling me, bothering me, asking me about some money, but yet I done gave you 200 some dollars for my car down. But God don't like ugly, so God moved him in another uh uh, auto shop, the man had gave me somebody that could look at my car. So they came and told me some things about my car. 
And this guy hadn't even really repaired my car. So holes off on the car and some other stuff. That show you how the devil works through people that so supposedly supposed to be doing good, but all along still doing bad things. He's no longer my mechanic, and he's no longer my life, thank God. You know, I will pay him. I paid him half his money. I'm going to pay him the rest, and then you don't have nothing else to say to me. Tell my kids, now you don't need to see me and say nothing to me, and you're not ever touching my car. Go on, you know. So anyway, I have another mechanic that's checking out my car. He's going to find out what's wrong. Well, he knows what's wrong with it, so that's getting repaired to the best of my knowledge, so I'm going to work on that. But I need my car. But that's how the devil attacks. When the Lord God puts me on the path of what to do, the devil comes and keeps attacking. And then I'm praying, like, what, you know, what is this about? And then I was looking at, here it is. I'm like, God, why am I working this shift when I'm tired all the time and it's hurting me? It's not. It's hurting me and it's helping me at the same time, but it's putting a lot of hurt and pressure and stress on me. And then I had to look at my life and realize I'm the one that asked for third shift, being greedy, which I was thinking. I didn't realize how quick price jumped up. And I cost, they paid me $2.50 more. I'm thinking that'll help me go ahead and buy a business, you know, start a little place to get my business going. In reality, it didn't. It hurt me because it hurt me now because of the shift. I'm not getting the proper rest that I need. You know, and look at me. I'm talking fast right now because I'm stressed. You know, I put it in God's hands, but I've stressed myself out because I shouldn't have let the lady dictate it. And when she told me that, oh, well, you can get hired on permanent and, you know, woo, woo, woo. I shouldn't have went for it. I should have went for the regular time, daytime, knowing darn well I don't need night. But looking at that 250 difference, I jumped on it. So that's my fault. So as always, here it is. Oh, Lord, help me. God, please get me out of this mess that I put myself in. So I'm not mad at God. I can't be mad at God. And it's not his fault. And this is not, oh, I don't know why. Yeah, I do know why. Because I should have paused and waited and listened to God and asked him what shift to choose instead of letting her dictate and tell me about this shift. So I shouldn't have never took no third shift job, ever. Never take a third shift job. I shouldn't. So that's my fault. So I'm praying for God to get me out of this, get me off a third shift, you know, what by any means necessary, put me on a regular shift, you know, and still praying for God to deal with this guy because he's still showing up and showing out. But like I said, I didn't want to fight and I don't want to lose my job. But I'm going ahead because you're picking on other people. You're bullying other people on the job. And let me tell you, this is how nasty this dude is. I'm going to call him what he is. He had went and told this other lady because we starting to talk among each other. Now everybody was quiet at first. So, you know, now everybody's talking, especially they talking to me because they thought I was going to get fired. So everybody's talking now. So then found out. He told another person that everybody, the newcomers, are going to get fired. They not, the, all the newcomers are not going to last. They're going to get fired. So you already got a vendetta against, not just me, you got a vendetta against everybody. For what reason, I don't know. Like I said, he's a tool of the devil. So that's why I said today, sometime I'm going to get and address HR because it don't make sense. You got a whole lot of things going on, and the company is a great company. So, like I said, I'm going to address it. I'm going to address it. You know, I'm going to address it because it's ridiculous. And then everybody's talking about quitting because of one person. That's the, don't that amaze you how the devil can come and he break Jezebel? That's the spirit of, thank you, Jesus. That's the spirit of Jezebel. I'm going to intimidate you by threatening you. you did, they haven't did anything, but he's threatening. He's writing people up for little petty stuff. Like I said, you can't go on. Not on my watch. I'm going to address it. You know what I'm saying? If I lose my job, I lose my job, but I'm not going to quit. I used to get pissed off, and then I would quit. I'm not quitting. You know, only thing they can do is fire me, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to speak up about it anyway. It doesn't matter, but you got to fire me this rip. I'm not quitting. You know, I got stitches in my mouth. My head was hurt, my tooth's aching, my car was broke down, and I'm walking, which my car still broke down, you know. I didn't get to go to church Saturday. Well, I was talking to Ned. I probably could have caught the 11 o'clock first, but anyway, I would have had to walk over, didn't catch the bus and all this like that. Then figure out how I'm going to get home, because no buses really run where I'm at. I'm a way great distance from the, uh, from the bus stop. It is whatever. Then, it didn't, you know, I wasn't even trying to get up this morning, trying to catch you no know, two buses to get to church for the 8 o'clock service. That was out of the out of the picture. So I did catch ten o'clock service on the uh on the whatever. So that's where I'm at. Like I said, uh I had asked Annette about helping me get the agenda set up and she's talking about she's busy but she's praying for her aunt and cousin. Lady had fifteen strokes. Fifteen strokes at three different hospitals. So I'm praying for her, let's keep her in prayer. Her auntie or her relative, let's keep her in prayer and keep Annette in prayer. 
She's going through financial difficulty. So God bless her and keep her. Let's pray for her. So right now, a lot of people's finances is bothering them. Let's keep that. Let's pray for the devil. Take his hands off of people's finances. Where people are getting to the point they want to die and they want to throw their hands up and give up. Don't give up. Help is on the way. Call on Jesus. Call on him and ask him to help you. He's there for you. That's what he wants you to do. He's our brother. He's our father, our mother. He's what we need when we need him. All we got to do is ask him and trust him and believe. Just the faith of a mustard seed. Just call on him. And uh, like I said, uh, oh, Lord, sometimes God, I'm realizing God don't want us always, you know, when we call on him, he says faith without works is dead. So I have to put action behind addressing this man. Because I already prayed and yet he keeps coming back, picking with everybody. So, like I said, then this has to be some action behind it, you know. I try to sit there and leave it alone, you know, and go with the flow, you know what I'm saying, be the forgiving person. But now you keep on wanting to pick with me and boo-boo, you got the wrong one because I'm going to hit you back, you know. I'm going to hit you back, you know. So, like I said, I keep trying to uh, do the best I can and sometimes you get weary, you know. I think people try to put pressure on you unnecessary. When you try trying and I try to do the best I can to pay my bills. I understand. I try to pay my bill. And then it's like the more I kept trying to pay, the more things came against me and I didn't even have the money. And that wasn't even my fault. You know, you tried. You know, and I, I know a lot of things. I don't know. Like I said, you can't give, your mama always said, you can't get blood from a turner. You know, and it's like as soon as you're trying to pay one person back, and then it's like everybody said, oh, well, she's paying this person back, which is due to their credit report. Uh, what's their name? Uh, TransUnion and all of them reporting all your information, putting all your information on there. Which who, I, you know, all of that is unnecessary. People credit to credit, good credit, bad credit. You know, I mean, it should be, that should be addressed. That should be addressed too. People running around here reporting all your information, your credit information, how bad your credit is, and you didn't pay this person and you did. Then when you pay some people back, they don't even have it on the credit report. So that's putting a lot of strain and stress on people. People need to start suing the creditors. When people commit suicide, there should be a lawsuit drawn up and petitioned in. It should be a lawsuit drawn up. People running around telling you, oh, your credit's bad and all this and that, and people want to commit suicide because they can't pay their credit. People should get a lawsuit together and sue them. TransUnion and all of them should be sued for putting your information out there because if you can't pay a person, then that person should continue to deal with it because some of the stuff is under the table anyway. It's not on your credit report, but they want to keep coming at you trying to sue you and then TransUnion later on picks up stuff. And, and here's a hit too. Sometimes the credit is already near tax time. They already get paid or they write it off. And so then other people come up and buy your, buy your, uh, your old credit debt. That should be addressed, and I'm going to get a petition against that if I find out with this lawsuit that that's what they, well, it ain't no lawsuit, this little police, whatever they're trying to do, which they can go in your bank account and take your money out of your bank account, just sit up, Capital One can, you know, creditors can, so you got to watch that, you know, why a lot of black people in particular don't have bank accounts, because so that's what they do, going on, wipe all your money out of your account, and then the bank can't even do nothing to stop it. So, you know, all of that stuff needs to be addressed, especially when you're poor and you're trying to get on your feet. Then here they come back and take and cut your legs out as soon as you're trying to stand. It's ridiculous. It is so ridiculous. And people get to the point they want to kill themselves. And then some people succeed at just because of a credit report. Like I said, sue them. It needs to be sued. If somebody in your family dies, take and draw up your family lawsuit against TransUnion. I'll join it. Get a petition written up. I'll draw it. I, I, I sign it. Shoot, I might probably end up getting it started myself, and I'm going to sign it. Like I said, I got a whole lot of stuff on my plate. You know what I'm saying? I need to go do this and do that. So I'm waiting for somebody to come and give me a rag so I'm going to take care of some stuff. You know, it's like bills after bills after bills after bills. You know? And some bills are necessary, I see. Some bills we put on ourselves and we need. Do you necessarily need to pay $60 for your cell phone? No. Get your cheaper thing. Here's some things that you can do. With your LG and E, if you're paying that, cut some lights off in the house. Don't turn your lights on. Don't leave your lights on. Don't leave everything in your house plugged up. That will really, you know, that'll cut your bill down a lot. If it's not over 80, if really, if it's not 100, I don't turn my air conditioner on. If it's 100, if it's 99, 100 or something, then I turn my own. Other than that, I don't turn it on. My sister is not used like that. And heating, now, nah, they don't need to turn all that heat on. You know, you don't need to keep heating out of rooms, especially rooms you don't need. Those things like that will save on your bill. You know what I'm saying? And plan out when you're driving your car. A lot of people burn gas because they get in the car and they start driving. 
you're going east when you need to go west. Then you're driving her all around east. Then you got to turn all the way back around. Then you got to go the opposite way. Plan out what you're going to do and what direction you're going in. That will save you abundance on gas, especially now with all of these hurricanes and everything and a whole lot of turmoil happening. All of these things and they're raising the gas prices. <laughs> you know, you can't see me, but I'm throwing my hands up. You see me now? <laughs> like I said, uh, my the little video thing is kind of blurred. But yeah, you know, here I am. <laughs> I got a little hat on the back of my head. It looks like a soldier or something. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's like the, uh, <laughs> I showed my face because I was making like, <laughs> It's like the the it's it, it it's like the more you're being pressed, the more thing you know you know the more you're going uh, uh, through trials and tribulation. It's like people add on to it. It's like putting too much flour, too much uh too much yeast in your biscuits, and it just bubbles over. You know what I'm saying? And you can't undo that once you put that yeast in there. It's just bo boiling over. You know what I'm saying? Your biscuits gonna be too big, and it's gonna overflow in the pan. But I mean, it just it's just. The devil's always at work, but like I said, we can leave, we can lessen a lot of things. Yeah, it's too much yeast in there, but what we do, you put less less biscuit uh, dough in there. If you know you put too much yeast in there, don't put a lot in there. You just need like a spoonful of dough to drop in that biscuit pan. Hello, we have to learn to accept responsibility for things that come at us. We can't always sit back and and ask others to do for us what we can do for ourselves. But we need to speak up. Stop taking everything that people throw on you. Somebody keep writing you up. Address that issue. Wow, I'm going to throw my hands up. and Nah, don't throw your hands up and leave. Address that. Especially if you figure you're going to get fired. What are you losing? Speaking up saying, well, why didn't this get done? Why didn't this get taken care of? But I do understand a lot of people do not know about their rights. I understand that. And like I said, we need to get empowered with, with knowing what our rights are. And I'm, I'm talking about as far as dealing in, a, in any situation, especially public and in the workforce. There are rights that we have as human beings. We have rights, period, as a human being. I have a right for you to address me as a human being, regardless of my race, color, creed, whatever. You need to address me like I'm a human being. You can't talk down to me and talk to me any kind of way because I'm an employee. Number one, nine out of ten times, you're the supervisor. You're not the head honcho. So I can go over your head, and then if that person still wants to address me in a negative manner, I still can go over their head. I also I can write some letters. Like I said, you don't have to ever take everything that put, people put on you. We need to start standing up. And like I said, I was looking at a man who was cleaning up when I was standing on the bus stop. I don't know if he was privately doing it or if he was a part of that company. But like I said, those are things that I want to put on the table for the community. I want us to start cleaning up the areas, cleaning up our community and helping. I have a lot of things that I want to do. Okay, my ride here. I got to get ready to go. I'm on other people's time. God bless you. Keep you. I'll, I'll load this up later. Bye-bye.